Good morning, Year 8. Welcome to another maths lesson. Um, as you can see, got my classroom neat and tidy, back to normal. Everything cleaned and ready for another day. So, here we go. Now, up until now, we've uh, looked at mean, mode, median and range. We've looked at frequency tables. We've looked at grouped frequency tables. In today's lesson, we're going to look at what some of these things are actually used for. So all very well being able to calculate the mean, the mode, the median and the range, but uh, we need to actually know what their purposes are. And so statistic seven, our objective is can you compare sets of data using the mean? Uh, success criteria, bronze knows how to calculate the mean, which I'm hoping you do. Silver can compare sets of data using the mean, and that is our main focus for today. And gold recognizes the effect on the mean of changing data values within the data set. Our keywords then data, mean, compare, value, set, and outlier. And as usual now, a fast five do now, five questions. Uh, the first two on, to, on the current topic and the last three on a most recent topic. So if you want to pause the video, have a go at these five questions and then unpause the video when you are ready to mark them. Thank you. OK, let's have a look at the answers. Here we go. Question one, four numbers have a mean of seven. What's the total of the four numbers? The mean, as you should know by now, is when you add all the numbers together and divide by how many there are. What number divided by four equals seven? The answer is 28. Question two, the mean of 12 numbers is eight. This is quite a good question. This the mean of 12 numbers is eight, so their total is 96. 12 times eight is 96. 12 times eight equals 96. Another number is added and the mean is now 10. So we've now got 13 numbers and their mean is 10. So their total is 130. What number was added? 130 take away 96, which equals 34. Now the answers to these questions always look a bit wacky. Um, we're adding one more number the mean's only gone up two. How can the answer be a massive 34? And if you think about it, the mean of all the numbers has gone up to 10. So each of those 12 numbers has increased by two. And two 12s is 24. And there's another 10 here, 24 and 10. There's our 34. That's just another way of thinking about it. Question three, share 12 pound in the ratio 17 to seven. 17 add 7 is 24. 12 pound divided by 24 is 50 pence. 17 times 50 pence is 8 pound 50. 7 times 50 pence is 3 pounds 50. Question 4. Simplify 8 to 12 to 40. All three numbers divide by 4, giving 2 to 3 to 10. If you got 4 to 6 to 20, You've part simplified, but you need to simplify all the way. And question five, write 16 to 12 in the form 1 to n. The best bet with a question like this, if you can simplify it first, please do. And that will give you 4 to 3. Each number divides by 4. And then to write it in the form 1 to n, you have to divide both numbers by 4. 4 divided by 4 gives you the 1. 3 divided by 4, 3 quarters, is 0 0.75. So 1 to 0 0.75. OK. Right, so today's lesson, we're looking at the mean. And before we go on, it's very important today that you've got a pen and a sheet of paper, a couple of sheets of paper, um, possibly a ruler, and definitely a calculator. This is very important because there's no extensive worksheets during today's lesson, but there are a lot of thought provoking questions along the way. So you will be pausing and unpausing quite a lot and you need to have the necessary equipment. So if you want to pause the video at this point, if you haven't got the equipment ready and then continue when you've got the equipment ready to carry on. 
Right, so first of all, let's look at this problem. Year 8 students are collecting soup tins for a food kitchen charity. They are working in groups and there is a prize for the group that does the best. Lenny's group consists of James, Andrew and Louis. James collects 7 tins, Andrew 12 and Louis 9. In Helen's group there are Joanna, Emily and Dora. Joanna and Dora both collect 10 tins, Emily collects 4 tins. Decide who should win the prize and give reasons for your decision. OK, well, let's just have a think about this for a minute. We could simply total up how many tins each group has collected. 7 and 12 is 19 and 9 is 28. So this group, Lenny's group, have collected 28 tins. Helen's group, 10 and 10 and 4 has collected 24 tins. That would be one way of seeing who should be the winner. Lenny's group has collected more tins. However, if we look at Helen's group, we've got two people who've collected 10 tins, whereas in Lenny's group, there's only one person who's collected 12 tins. So we've got more people here who've collected more tins. But then in Lenny's group, Everybody has collected at least seven tins, whereas in Helen's group, Emily only collected four tins. I think on this basis, we'd have to award the prize to Lenny's group for winning, for collecting the higher total. Maybe you've come up with some other solution, but I think that would be the best one in this case. However, things change when we've got this kind of situation. Who wins now? Harry's group. I won't name all the people and how many tins they've got. Lucy's group. Again, several people collecting different tins. And now decide who should win the prize and give reasons for your decisions. Have a look at those. Um, have a think about it and have a think about what the problem is with these sets of data. Just have a little look. I'm not going to pause it, I just want you to have a look at that and we'll start to go through this as an example in a moment. Okay, let's have a look. Right, who wins now? Can you settle the argument? Well, Harry totaled up his group, his group here, and in his group, they collected 36 cans, whereas Lucy's group only collected 30 cans. So Harry is saying we should win the prize. Based on the earlier example, where there were three people in each group, that would sound reasonable. However, Lucy, quite rightly, is turning around and saying that's not fair. There are more people in your group. Lucy then goes on to do a calculation. If I divide all the tins into six equal piles, one for each student, the total amount is the same as if everyone got five cans each. So in Lucy's group of six people, where they collected 30 cans, each person got collected a mean of five cans. This is where the idea of the mean comes into it. Mean equals five. So five cans is called the mean number of cans for her group. Harry's group got 36 cans altogether. So even though they got more cans, there were nine people in his group. And the mean number of cans for his group is 36 divided by those nine people, which equals four. So if we are comparing the mean for both of these groups, Lucy's group with a mean of five had a higher mean than Harry's group with a mean of four. So here is a mean question for you to have a go at. Students in year eight held a similar competition. I will let you read the question and answer the, um, answer the questions underneath. Pause the video, have a go at working out the answers and unpause the video when you are ready to mark. OK, let's have a look. So what was the mean amount collected by Tara's group? 
They collected 28 cans. Tara and her three friends, there were four of them, 28 divided by 4 equals 7. The mean was 7. With Finn's group, Finn and five of his friends, so there are six people, 36 cans, the mean 36 divided by 6 equals 6. Tara's group had the greater mean, so who won the prize? Tara's group. Let's move on. So, in your own words, how do you calculate the mean of a set of numbers? Pause the video again and try and write down an exact definition of what we mean by the mean. OK, let's see if you've got a decent definition. It's where you add up all the data values, then divide by how many data values there are. OK, it's very important that you fully understand that definition of the mean. Very, very important. Let's move on. So here we have some questions finding the mean of various values. Um, we've got some yellow, green, some red and some blue. I'd like you to pause the video and I'd like you to have a go at all of them and think about them as you go, particularly this bit at the bottom. What's the same and what's different? Are there easy ways of working some of these out? Have a go and see what you get. Pause the video and unpause it when you are ready to mark them. OK, let's have a look. Here are our answers. Right, going down this side first. Five numbers total, um, 20, no, sorry, 25. 25 divided by 5 is 5. Four numbers total, 20 divided by 4 is 5. These numbers, the mean is 7, and these numbers, the mean is 4.75. If you noticed, these and these are the same, so the mean is still 5. Now this was an interesting question. 103, 106, 104, 105, 107. The mean's 105. You did not have to add all five numbers together. Since they all start with 100, our mean is also going to start with 100. Just add the units, 3, add 6, add 4, add 5, add 7. And that gives you 25. 25 divided by 5, because there are 5 data values, is 5. You already add the 100, stick the 5 on the end, 105. These numbers are all negative. And if you look, the numbers are all the same as these numbers. So instead of having a mean of 5, we have a mean of negative 5. These numbers here, this one here, 3, 6, 4, 5, 7, Again, these numbers are all the same as these numbers. They've just got to add x on the end. So the mean, again, is 5, add x. These numbers are just the first numbers with the 5 and the 4 swap round. Mean is 5. This was a beautiful question. I really like this one. If you look at these, you will see they are all multiples of 7. We've got at the top... 3 times 7, here we've got 6 times 7, here we've got 4 times 7, and here we've got 7 times 7. 3, 6, 4 and 7. 3, 6, 4 and 7. The mean of 3, 6, 4 and 7 is 5. So our answer is going to be 5 times 7, which is 35. 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Our mean, I believe they've made a mistake in this question, um, so we'll leave this one, but the mean is actually 13 over 25 if you've worked it out. Um, and this one here, the answer is 27. The answer here is 27. I believe on these last two, um, the questions were meant to be slightly different, but these are the answers if you um, worked out the, the last two. OK, let's move on. Right, which team is working the hardest? We've got 
three teams tugging three heavy animals. Um, smiling hippo, rhino, rhino, um, an elephant and a big gorilla. These are their weights, 2,300 kilograms, 2,700 kilograms and 800 kilograms. Which team is working the hardest? Which team has the easiest job and why? So pause the video, please. Work out your answer. And um, when you're ready to unpause the video and we'll go on from there. OK, well, it's a case of working out the mean. Here we've got eight people pulling the rhino, 2,300 divided by eight, it means that each person is pulling a mean of 287.5 kilograms. For the elephant, 2,700 divided by nine men, each person's pulling 300 kilograms. And for the gorilla, 800 kilograms divided by three people, each person is pulling a mean of 266.67 kilograms. So the second team is working the hardest since their mean is 300 kilograms. Third team is working um, the easiest since they're only having to pull 266.67 kilograms. Moving on. Cat food. On Mondays to Fridays, Cassie feeds her cat two tins of food per day. On Saturdays and Sundays, she uses three tins per day. Three tins per day, sorry. Calculate the mean number of tins per day that Cassie uses. Pause the video and pause when you're ready to mark your answer. OK, let's see if you've got this right. Monday to Friday, she uses two tins per day. That's five days. So over those five days, she uses ten tins. Saturday and Sunday, three tins per day. That's two days, two times three six tins over the two days so in total over a week she uses 16 tins so the mean number of tins per day 16 tins divided by seven days 2.29 tins per day okay moving on again how does the mean change consider this set of numbers what happens to the original mean when one of the numbers is removed, when will the mean go up, when will it go down, and why? OK, pause the video, write down what you think are the answers to these, and then when you're ready to see whether you're right, unpause the video and we'll move on. OK, let's have a look. So, what happens to the original mean when one of the numbers is removed? Well, the mean will go up or down unless one of the numbers is actually the mean, in which case it would stay the same if that number was removed. But in general, the mean would go up or down. When will the mean go up? The mean will go up if a number less than the mean is removed. So let me move this box. To... Ignore that, sorry. And the mean will go down if a number more than the mean is removed. Right, some questions to do with the mean now. First one, create a data set with a mean of six. The second one, you're given a set of data values where the mean is six and you've got to change two numbers so that the mean stays the same. Third question, you're given a set of numbers um, that have a mean of six and you've got to find the missing one. And the final question, X, Y and Z have a mean of six. If Y is equal to four, find possible values for X and Z. What I'll do with these is pause it in a moment or two and then I will give you some hints to help you with any questions that you may not have been able to answer. So pause the video please and have a go yourself first. Okay, here are some hints to help you with the questions. Again, pause the video and unpause it when you're ready to check your answers. OK, here are the answers. Create a data set with a mean of 6. If you add three data values that add up to 3 times 6, so 10, 5 and 3 add up to 18. Um, if you add four data values that add up to total 24, 
five data values that have to total 30, and so on. Lots of different possible answers. The mean of 3466896 is 6. Change two numbers so the mean stays the same. Well, you could take one off a number and add one to another number. So taking the 6 and the 6, if I made that up to a 7, I'd have to take one off that, um, making this to a 5. Basically, the total has to stay the same. If the total of these numbers stays the same, the mean will still be 6. I could have taken 3 off here and added 3 onto here. So long as what I do to 1, if I take a num an amount of 1, I add that number onto another, then the mean will stay the same. Third question. 2, 5, 7, 9 and x have a mean of 6. Find x. There's five numbers in all, they've got a mean of 6, so their total must be 30. We've got four of those numbers, they total 23. So the fifth number, x, must be 7. 30 take away 23 is 7. x, y and z have a mean of 6. If they've got a mean of 6, their total must be 18. If y is 4, x plus z must be 18 take away 4, which is 14. So x and z must add up to 14. There could be 1 and 13, 2 and 12, 3 and um, 11, and so on. Any two numbers that total up to 14. Moving on. Right, so two questions on removing a number. Um, I'll let you have a go at these two questions, and then we'll have a look at them in a moment. So pause your video, please, and unpause it when you're ready to continue. OK, we'll have a look at two different ways of answering these questions. The one on the left, very basic. One of these numbers has been removed. The mean of the remaining numbers is 3.25. Which number has been removed? Well, one removed will leave four numbers. Four times 3.25 is 13. So in other words, the total of the four remaining numbers must be 13. And it's very easy to see that 5 add 4 add 3 add 1 is 13. So the number 2 has been removed. That's a really basic question. This one's slightly tougher. One of these numbers has been removed. The mean of the remaining numbers is 4.2. Which number has been removed? If you remove one number, it leaves 5. And 5 times 4.2 equals 21. Now, the six numbers originally totaled 27. They now total 21. So the number 6 has been removed. This is the second way of doing it. Find what the original set of numbers added up to. Find what they add up to now that one's been removed, and that will tell you the number that's been removed. Moving on. Mean mass. The mean weight of 11 players in a women's football team is 68 kilograms. Tammy, who weighs 74 kilograms, is replaced by Georgia, who weighs 85 kilograms. What is the new mean weight of the team? How many ways can you find to answer this question? I'll be happy if you can find one. I'll be even happier if you can find two. Um, pause the video, have a go, and unpause it when you're ready to mark your answers. OK, let's have a look. All right, the simple way is to work out the total weight of the women's football team. There's 11 players, their mean is 68, so their total weight must be 11 times 68, which is 748 kilograms. Now Tammy is being replaced, so we can take away her 74 kilograms, which leaves 674 kilograms. George is joining the team, she weighs 85, so we add 85 onto this 674, the new total weight of the team is 759 kilograms. There are still only 11 members in the team, so 759 divided by 11 gives our new mean of 69 kilograms. That is the simplest way to approach this. A different way to approach it would be to work out that since Tammy is leaving, she weighs 74, we're taking away 74. Since Georgia is joining, she weighs 85, 85 take away 74 means there is 11 kilograms extra joining the team. If we work out the mean 
of that 11 kilograms split between 11 people, 11 divided by 11 is 1 kilogram. And that 1 kilogram extra has got to be added, spell, 1 kilogram extra to be added to the mean. So the new mean is 68, which was the old mean. Add 1, which is 69 kilograms. That's slightly more uh, advanced mathematical thinking. There's nothing wrong with doing it the simple way, but this is a little bit more advanced mathematical thinking. Moving on. Outliers. These are Natalia's maths test results for the year. 75, all these are in percentages. 75, 52, 79, 88, 65, 67, 9, 61, 71 and 66. And your mean test result for the year, Natalia, is 63.3%. Do you think this is a, refer, a fair reflection of Natalia's result? Why? So have a think about that. Pause the video again and unpause it when you are ready to continue. OK, no, this is not a fair reflection of Natalia's result. Um, outliers have affected Natalia's mean score. In particular, the one score of 9% has dragged her mean score down. Let's have a look. Her mean is 63.3%. She's only actually scored under 63.3 three times, 52, 9 and 61. And that 9% has absolutely dragged her score right down. This is called an outlier. It's a totally untypical mark for Natalia. What we tend to do with statistics is if we've got such an outlier, is we would tend to ignore the outlier completely and total up everything else and divide by how many other data values there are. OK. Now, the final question for today, the final thing that I want you to consider, children per family, there are five families living in my road, which of the following could not be the mean number of children per family that live there? Okay, this one's quite basic, but pause the video and unpause it when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, the answer, 0.2 children, yes. As you know, we always leave means um, to the decimal place. We don't um, round them up or down, but we would never have 0 0.2 children. Right, folks, um, this, we've come to the end of today's lesson. The important thing about today is that I wanted to see, I wanted you to see some practical situations from real life where you would uh, use the mean, particularly in comparing data sets very useful to use the average in the uh, to use the mean in those situations and in our next lesson we'll go on to look at how we use one of the other averages in real life situations thank you year eight um, i hope you have a nice day goodbye